Welcome to PM Express Business Edition as discussions about the IMF program will just not go away and the much talked about financing assurance. We're coming to you from Marrakesh, Morocco, where the IMF annual meetings just ended. We'll be engaging the Minister of Finance on how the meetings has gone and whether we are indeed on track to get this much talked about financing assurance from the bilateral creditors and even the private ones, as well as those who are holding our euro bonds. Honorable Minister, thank you so much for your time and welcome to PM Express Business Edition. Ajina Kra, but in uh, Marrakesh, Morocco. Okay. One would say, the how's the experience been? I mean, there were people who were quite skeptical about this thing happening here, the F tremor, the earthquake, but finally, a beautiful convention center, all the participants, great people. What do you make of the result by the Moroccan government to go ahead and put together a marvelous showpiece? Yeah. Thank you. And I think it's, it's really um, uh, an amazing testament um, to the resilience of, of the country and uh, what you can do with commitment even when there are naysayers um, who do not believe that it will happen. Because we are all... Um, seeing what their resilience has done and to put together um, this you know major 50-year event for Africa in such a short time and, and um, to be so ready for it um, and I think I, I kind of reflect on where we are in Ghana and what looked impossible maybe last year July um, we are seeing a very different change um, in our fortunes and that um, has been very encouraging um, to see what is happening here and just oppose it is what we in Ghana are also facing um, to see that consistently even as um, most people were unsure lack confidence as to what could happen to our economy uh, we went through as you know uh, very quickly with the staff level agreement last year and the shortest time between staff level and agreement and um, the IMF board sitting mm -hmm. to approve it um, has been Ghana compared to two and a half years for Zambia etc etc um, so that's indications of what uh, a people united in thought uh, and um, I'm deeply committed um, to an objective um, can achieve what do you make of the staff level agreement that has been reached? Again, somewhere, again, worried about whether we're going to get this thing. Interesting enough, the fund came through, the staff came through. We had the staff level agreement. What do you make of this significant development that has taken place? Yeah, I'm glad you called it significant uh, because um, uh, when they came two, three weeks ago, um, I think Sri Lanka had just um, not passed its first review, so it was um, not a very good backdrop. Um, but we, we went at it as a country, as a ministry, and all those who participated, especially with the Bank of Ghana. And as you know, um, last week, Friday, we received a staff level agreement. The question now becomes whether by the third week in November, which is when the fund will meet the OCC um, Common Framework um, Committee, will be able to deliver the Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, fortunately, two days ago, um, Zambia did do that, so that's um, a sense of a positive direction that I think we would we will follow in their steps. Um, my deep sense is that um, we will get whatever is appropriate um, for um, the fund board to be able to make their decision uh, in November. So I'm confident about it. Part of the reason is, yes, we did meet with um, um, the, the officials from the Paris Club, um, and there was pretty positive assurance. I also had the opportunity to meet uh, with the governor, of the PBOC, the People's Bank of China, which is their central bank, and uh, his assurances were also very positive. Um, so really, um, I'm confident that we will, we will get uh, to the board, and the board would approve the next tranche. Some, some will see that this is an oral submission or word. Can we take the word of these actors that you've engaged that they would deliver that Memorandum of Understanding on time, 
as the board works to meet in the third week of November. And do you think that you have done what you're supposed to do on the part of Team Ghana to ensure that these creditors come on board when it matters? Yeah. Well, Team Ghana, um, George, um, keeps delivering and really a testament to Bank of Ghana and um, the ministry um, staff for what they do. Um, so that we are unequivocal about. We all have seen the type of work they've done since July um, to where we are, you know. And the world was created by words. So if these guys who are governors and heads of these institutions um, um, in, um, you know, um, confirm to me or say to me that you're on the right path and we believe that we can make it, um, I do take them on their word. Maybe Selassie, the African director of the IMF, just paraphrasing his words, said that Ghana has done its part with respect to getting the financing assurance. It is now left for these creditors to show commitment by giving that thumbs up or the memorandum of understanding. What do you make of these words from an independent actor giving you thumbs up or arguing that you, Team Ghana, you have done your part. Now it is left with the creditors to come on board. I think those, that's a very significant statement uh, from the fund, meaning the fund is essentially saying that Team Ghana, you know, you went through your quantitative performance criteria, you went through your indicative targets, you've gone through your structural benchmarks, and therefore the onus is now on these creditors. And um, what really is a moral authority um, for them to hold out, you know? And um, so far, uh, with the indications of the economy performing, um, they should also be assured uh, that whatever memorandum of understanding that we come to, we have the capacity to deliver because we have exhibited it. Um, and that's why I'm confident that in my discussions with them uh, and their positive um, encouragement to us, um, I think they'll come through. Speed is important, and um, that that would do that. On the, we are stopping in London on our way back um, to meet up with investors um, who are the eurobond investors. Uh, and so far, discussions with them are also going well. The expectation um, some time ago was that you can never get to any sense of equilibrium until maybe next year, middle of next year. And I'd always said we need to get this thing done by year end. Um, and, and I believe that the discussions that we are having uh, would enable us to also complete that uh, by year end. So backtrack and get into the IMF as well. Do you get surprised personally sometimes by the independent comment of the fund with respect to one, how you fed under the program, and even with the comment by Bibi Selassie recently on the fact that Tim Ghana has done his bit. He also made a comment that if you look at the program or the fund program, you have performed extremely well. There are people who are so skeptical about how this program is progressing and whether we'll get the results. Yeah. Does it personally surprise you about the fund's independent comments about one, the performance of the program? And even here, Bibi Selassie is saying that, listen, Ghana has done its bit. Creditors, show your commitment mm -hmm. if you're really committed to helping developing or middle-income countries or low-middle-income countries like Ghana succeed whatever problems they are going through. Yeah. Um, George, I mean, I'm glad you are emphasizing this point. It, it is a very difficult time um, for most people. Um, but, but I think the, there are two things. One, understanding. Uh, for everyone, uh, positively or subliminally or whatever, that we have indeed turned the corner. And secondly, acknowledging um, from our fund partners that they are saying that we have done our part. You know, So you look therefore at 2017 through 2020, and you see how these matrices of growth and um, um, deficits um, and inflation um, all trended in the correct direction. Then we had this cataclysmic period uh, and we are picking ourselves up in a strong way. But we've done it before and we are confident that we will. So when the fund begins to acknowledge, accept 
that you know all of the experiences around uh, they haven't seen a more committed group um, that is um, really working towards achieving um, these um, very difficult objectives. Um, I think it's something we should take um, seriously. And we as a nation uh, begin to also pull in the same direction um, to know that yes, uh, the Moroccans, the earthquake did happen, uh, but then they've been able to stage uh, one of the most impressive um, World Bank annual meetings and we also would do likewise. Let's come back to this meeting that you'll be having with this. Is it the private creditors in the Eurobond, if I got it right? Again, does what had happened with respect to the, the assurance that you've gotten from these bilateral creditors and even what has happened in Zambia, because I'll be coming back to because again, it feeds into the optimism that if China has been able to grant Zambia this and looking at Ghana's situation, we are on that path. Let me, let me first even get your thought on that one as well. Interesting development. Zambia has secured this MOU. It took them nine months. Does it again support your optimism that, listen, we are indeed on track to get this MOU from China and the other bilaterals? Mm -hmm. um, yes, of course, it's encouraging because all of these things are sort of flag posts. There you go. But, you know, even as we sit in the positions that we are in, um, one has to be very clear of the issue of um, a decamfo. You know, Ghana always leads the way. Um, and so you look at um, this trend that we have of SLAs to um, fund approval, and, you know, um, we did the, the shortest period of time. In the same way, I believe that um, we will do um, the next MOU uh, in the shortest um, possible time um, as Ghana is wont to do, and we continue to work hard at it. Um, but, you know, George, at the end of the day, uh, we will do this work, and, and I believe that we'll be successful uh, in time. Um, but all of this also is saying to ourselves, what is the growth and job agenda mm -hmm. in all of this? Mm -hmm. And that really becomes the most um, preeminent issue uh, that we are dealing with, especially for, for this budget. So yes, um, Ghana has done its part. Yes, we have turned the corner. Yes, the fund um, is acknowledging that. Now that's signaling to uh, the creditors, both um, the OCC um, Paris Club and also the Eurobond investor. Because at the end of the day, what do you want? You want a country in which when this restructuring is done, um, will get off his feet quicker and be able to, um, to, to fulfill the terms of, of the understandings that we will reach. And I think we are, we are proving that we have the metal to do that. This engagement with the privateers, private creditors and the Eurobond, some will say that it could be quite an interesting one because uh, what terms are you offering them to ensure that they come on board? These are private bilaterals. Yes, of course, they would be able to understand Ghana's situation, but a private person, a private bank, really, he's looking at his shareholders, he's looking at his bottom line, he's looking at hitting his targets. It could be an interesting negotiation, some would say. It will be, but it is not, you know, um, uh, a situation where um, uh, very um, decent uh, returns have been earned over a certain period and the world has gone through um, this difficulty which has affected all creditors. How then do you um, restructure the portfolio such that um, it will be paid over time? So you need to give the country space um, for the growth and jobs issues that I mentioned so that there will be productivity to be able to sustain it um, and also um, significantly um, to acknowledge that, you know, we haven't come, this without, come to this without doing anything. Our domestic debt exchange program was difficult, um, sacrificial, um, and so we have bed and shared. Um, it's not like we are coming and telling you, well, you take a haircut and we haven't done anything. Considerable restructuring in Ghana where we moved interest rates um, from maybe an average of 19.2 um, to 9%. Now that's significant. Uh, and so that's all on the table. 
um, we have done our part with regards to burden sharing. We have done our part with regards to the economic indicators as to where we go. We've done it in the fastest possible time. I think it then behoves you to also tick those three boxes that we have so that we can get to the equilibrium that would ensure faster productivity. Well, help me with some education. I know that the bilateral agreement or MOU is critical for the board approval. Where do these Eurobond actors and private creditors also play in respect to our whole program and program performance and getting board approval for our performance, please? Right. I think the, the, the connection, um, first and foremost, is really with the official creditors, uh, the Paris Club, Common Framework, the DSSI that we are working on, that sort of affects really uh, immediately what the board of the IMF does. Um, the ones with the um, commercial creditors is almost like a good faith discussions are going on towards the restructuring, and I think we are proving that we are engaging in a good way. Um, uh, and therefore, um, I'm sure most people were expecting uh, to be way um, sometime next year that world, but I think we'll be able to do it before year end. And you're targeting by the end of this year. That's exactly what we want to what do. What are you offering to them that you think that they will agree to your proposal? I think I, I mentioned the three things. A, we as a country um, have done our part of the domestic debt exchange, and it was in an inconsequential act. Uh, B, um, we have fulfilled all these quantitative performance criteria, indicative targets, um, and structural benchmarks. So that commitment is there, um, and we have worked with speed. Um, so that's what we are offering. We are saying that in addition to that, uh, a growth agenda uh, is being prepared um, so that uh, productivity and growth may even be better than what is, what is um, programmed. Um, so those show a serious partner who is committed to change, who is committed to bringing back stability um, so that um, they also um, have a sense of um, the future as being stable and that their restructured portfolio uh, will be, will be honoured. This is PM Express Business Edition as we look at Ghana's fund program and whether we are indeed assured of this financing insurance. We'll be getting more clarity on this growth and jobs the minister has been talking about as we come back from the break and also the trickle down effect of these negotiations of this program. At the macro level, we've seen some numbers stabilizing. How does this affect the business community? How does this bring back the investors on board and also Jobs, jobs, jobs in the midst of this growth. This is PM Express Business Edition coming to you from Marrakesh, Morocco, where the annual meetings of the IMF and the World Bank is currently going. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to PM Express Business Edition from Marrakesh, Morocco, where the annual IMF meeting is currently ongoing. And we're looking at the Ghana's IMF program, the first review, and whether we are indeed on track to get the much talked about financing assurance from the country's bilateral creditors and engaging the Minister of Finance, Honorable Kenofria, to get more details on that one and what is influencing this optimism. Honorable, thank you so much for your time. There are concerns about, yes, the macro numbers are stabilizing. We've seen the CD, we've seen inflation trickling down and all the rest. but. Just like what a comment that was passed some time ago about inflation in ABD. Mm -hmm. With all these macro numbers stabilizing, what is the ministry doing to ensure that Joe the Plumber, uh, the man at uh, Abu Kain, Kojo the Plumber, someone at Manti Mankebi, yeah. fills the turn the corner comments that you're making? Because if the corner is turning, he's not even seen any corner to turn as a businessman as a normal trader in Makola, what is being done to ensure that with the stability that we are seeing or the signs of stability or recovery, it trickles down to the normal Ghanaian? I mean, George, these are, uh, what do you call, um, sleepless nights nice questions, huh? as you uh, ponder um, how quickly this impact um, will, will come um, to our people. Do you, do you get them, the sleepless nights? Do you get them? I do. Thank God I have a 
clinical psychologist as a wife, but <laughs> um, no, no, it, it's really um, uh, profoundly difficult um, um, to see um, the trajectory that we were on uh, before this and where uh, we are today, but still trending in the correct direction. Um, I think maybe what has come down to all of us Ghanaians anyway is the importance of macro stability. I don't think anybody will question that A, uh, make sure that the CD is stable, make sure inflation goes down, because inflation really is, a, is the greatest destructor um, of wealth and, and um, enhancement of, of poverty. Um, so even before the fund came, um, President instructed um, that we put together uh, a post-COVID program for economic growth, which is a PCPEG, um, such that when we decided to go to the fund, we already had a framework in which it was built on, and that may uh, be responsible for the rapid progress that we have made because we are already prepared. Um, then it becomes, you know, how quickly that impact will, will um, trickle down to um, quote unquote, all of us in our various constituencies, um, whether upper middle class, middle class, um, the farmer, etc. And um, you can see um, the interventions with regards to, let's say, um, was it three or four weeks ago, the announcement um, for the cocoa farmers um, for, for a start. Um, we are really looking at the youth start program. Um, to see how we can inject much more resources into that um, to enable, you know, a sense of um, activity and options as to appropriate um, skills for people and access to financing at cost that, that um, at prices that make sense. Um, so that we are looking to do. We've been able to maintain uh, petrol prices within a certain ambit and pray that, you know, with the war in Israel and all of that, uh, that does not get destabilized. Um, so um, it's a constant thought as to how to, for it to trickle down to you know, Kojo the plumber. Um, uh, and I, I think it will take a bit of time, um, but we are moving in the right direction. We should have hope that we've done it before and we can and will do it, do it again. Um, but in, in, any projections that you've given to us? Because if, if you gauge the pulse of the market, people yeah. it's like things are difficult and all the rest. Are there any projections, not dates, but listen, even when the policy rate goes down, there, there's a lag period. If these things should continue stabilizing, it's trending down. Listen, in the next six months or eight months, listen, that effect will be felt because the, the concern is that things are still hard. Yeah, uh, acknowledge. Uh, acknowledged and very difficult, um, but we are going to come up with, with a growth plan um, with um, the budget, uh, which will be read sometime in the middle of November, uh, which will give you know indications and hope that we we will be able to um, ensure um, that all of us uh, are inclusively. Um, um, taking care of um, in the future. Even when you look at um, what we are doing with the fund, uh, you can see that uh, with the LEAP program, um, uh, we have indexed it to make sure that we protect you know, against inflation, and we are also increasing the number of people that may be eligible to it um, to make sure that no one is really sort of left behind. Um, schools feeding rates are being increased, um, uh, and affirmative action is something that we are also going to be to, to be really focused on. So within the embedded in the program itself is um, really a good a good faith effort um, to make sure um, that uh, we have a landing zone that is good for all. But in the end, you know, what do you do of the 23 to the 35? What do you do uh, to the entrepreneur? What do you do to the um, SMEs? And, and that's where uh, we'll be finding various packages for them. Uh, before the, the program ends in Marrakesh, uh, we have meetings uh, with the IFC um, looking at certain um, support um, for, uh, for financing to be able to, to help of the banks. 
Um, so, um, George, it's, 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 it's a tough one, um, but we can't take our eye off the ball in terms of the macro stability issues. But at the same time, the growth agenda uh, for jobs, you know, is something that we have to keep our eyes on. Tell me more about this growth and jobs thing that you're talking about. Why growth and jobs in these times? And tell me more about this program. Right, I mean, the IMF programs um, usually um, focus on austerity, and that's the macro you know, issues, restructure your debt so that you fall into a certain landing zone, and then also make sure that no one is left behind, so there's inclusiveness there. And those boxes we have ticked. Um, now, what do you um, superimpose on that to be able to trickle down um, to um, could you the plumber that you talked about and that is what we are looking um, to do so in identifying um, like economic co enclaves um, where we've we've started the acquisition of lands in the OT region uh, in greater Accra um, for the issue of rice maize poultry etc and what type of packages do you give um, to these um, these sectors that we are, uh, the president created an interministerial group um, of you know, agriculture, trade, ourselves, um, and gender, etc., to really focus uh, on this, and and that is what um, would be embedded in the budget um, to make sure that we address um, this issue of growth. And there's a pipeline in which um, people will then feel. Um, that you know the alternatives, and that there's even more hope going going ahead. Um, so that's what we are looking at, and we are hoping that that will then increase um, the growth that has been projected um, in the program. You know, two, three, or four, five percent more than it should. Well, we're coming to the the growth projections and whether we can really achieve that. But again, there's growth and jobs. Some will say that, don't we have too much program, the NYEP, jobs, and all the other programs? What is the differentiating factor of this program, and really, can it help turn the corner? We have turned the corner already. <laughs> can Very it turn? <laughs> we have not turned the corner. Uh, we've turned the corner, given the numbers. I don't think you can lie with data, so that is true. Um, you, you do mention the fact of all these, the multiplicity of programs, and all of that is looking to be rationalized so that we have, you know, um, sort of a pathway um, to that. Um, but, George, what can you do? You have to make sure um, that you put the conditions that would enable people to be entrepreneurial, have access to skills, have access to capital, and then let um, uh, their own inner ability as entrepreneurs um, to, to, to be able to be expressed. And, and that is what we have to continue doing. Growth, the fund says that the, the 1.2 or 1.5 is going to be revised. The Bank of Ghana believes that we can do more than 3%. You're talking about 2.5%. Interesting dynamics here mm -hmm. in terms of growth where we're so concerned initially. But it appears that we might even do far better and what has been projected. Yeah, yeah. Um, good point, and, and that's really by virtue of hard work and making sure that the fiscals uh, are not derailed with regards to um, expenditure and also revenue mobilization. Uh, revenue, as you have seen, um, were very good, and maybe a billion um, CDs more for, uh, for the half year. Um, so that's, that's good. With regard to spending, uh, we're able to uh, contain that um, below what was expected, so that's good. So we are all beginning to, um, to, to take these characteristics of fiscal rectitude a lot more seriously and the issue of using a uh, computerized system to make sure um, that um, clearances uh, are not done on the local level. Um, Cocoa Board, for example, uh, we have a turnaround plan. As you know, we had to restructure uh, maybe 15 billion of the uh, Cocoa Bills in which we did 7 point something and the uh, Central Bank also did uh, around that uh, amount. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, both the 
uh, governor of the central bank and the minister for finance myself will now be on the board uh, we also uh, have um, set up a, a desk or setting up a desk um, at the minister of finance that will really interact with the financing division of cocoa board um, to make sure that the issues of fertilizer cocoa roads um, overheads you know are all brought um, into an ambit um, of, um, of discipline um, so those then uh, begin to tell you how we are getting into the issue of expenditure and also on the revenue side uh, how to push more digitalization to make sure that GRA performs. So a quick one again you mentioned Cocoa Board what is the status of the restructuring both the Cocoa Board and the energy sector debts as well and just to give me an update what is happening. Great Cocoa Board I've mentioned um, we of course came to to market and uh, restructured their cocoa bills and so um, that is stable um, and then the administrative plans that I've told you so that we are engaged uh, on much more on a daily basis as to what's going on um, and then to be able to ensure that issues of fertilizers and cocoa roads are rationalized so that's important on the energy sector side um, it's always been a challenge with regards to um, ECG's um, collections. Um, so that has been improved. As you know, uh, utility rates have been going up automatically um, every quarter to make sure that there is um, um, cost recovery. Um, and so we'll maintain that. Um, the collections will be audited every quarter and agreed by PURC um, uh, to make sure that um, the cash waterfall mechanism for the independent power producers, you know, um, and um, uh, grid calls, etc., are always sort of respected, um, and that we get away uh, from these legacy debts that we've had in the IPP uh, environment. Also, then, so we've agreed on a monthly payment um, to them, so that we are always current uh, to the IPPs, and now in the throes of looking at the legacy liabilities of about $1.1 billion as to how to restructure those uh, for the future. Um, so once we get discipline in expenditure in the, uh, the power energy sector, uh, make sure SOEs um, such as Cocoa Board are also contained in the way expenditures uh, are managed, um, then you are getting into uh, a much better period or environment uh, where our tax dollars will go a much longer way. This is PM Express Business Edition. When we come back, we're going to get Minister from you again, the business community, the private sector, in all these things. How do you still address your concerns about the cost of credits and the business environment? And also, 2024 budget, you might think is next year, it's next month. What should we be expecting? This is PM Express Business Edition. As you wrap up on this discussion with the Minister of Finance from Marrakesh, Morocco, on the ongoing or the annual IMF meeting, which just ended in Marrakesh, Morocco. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to PM Express Business Edition. As you look at the financial assurance, the much talked about financial assurance, and whether Ghana has indeed on track to secure it, we're engaging the Minister of Finance, Honorable Kenofiata, in Marrakesh, Morocco, where the annual meetings of the IMF took place, and what is being done to secure this financial assurance. Honorable, private sector, yes. interest rates is very high. Yeah. Again, talking about this program, what is in place for the private sector to ensure that they also feel the impact of this stability or the science of stability that we are seeing at the macro level. Yeah, um, uh, excellent question. Uh, because I, I think um, uh, as a market-oriented uh, government, um, there's no question in our minds about the need for the private sector to be able to thrive and for us to gain the type of productivity that we require as a nation and to create the jobs because there's a limit to what government can do in terms of absorbing jobs. Um, we have, as you know, uh, been able to once upon a time bring in interest rates um, to reasonable levels and then we've gone through this period and with the restructuring um, where we, have to, we are going to have to confront um, how do we get um, them to have access to capital, um, long-term financing 
end um, rates that that makes sense and and that really is what we need to uh, be able to deliver in this coming budget exactly and uh, what alternatives we have for them to have access to capital um, but they all also um, I believe understand the need for macro stability you know at whatever rate it is if it is stable they can plan and uh, we are assuring them of our commitment to make sure that um, the, um, the inflation continues to come down to make sure that the currency um, at least is stable or continues to trend um, downwards and um, that we will then our challenge now is finding appropriate capital uh, for them to be able to do their business and that is what uh, we hope that by the time the growth uh, plan is done in time for the budget um, in November um, we will have um, inklings of how that would work. You spoke about the budget, uh, when are we expecting to be presented to Parliament? Um, I think the budget um, constitutionally uh, by maybe November 15th uh, we should have read that uh, and so that certainly is a target uh, for us to do that. Before then, too, we are going to have what we call the Mutual Prosperity Dialogue, which is really also teasing out uh, the private sector as to what they also are expecting. Even though over this period we've met with AGI, Guta, Chamber of Commerce, all of that, to, to take in their views. Um, uh, and um, predominantly is a multiplicity of taxes um, that uh, they have raised as a major concern that we have to look at. Um, so looking at the taxes, looking at access to capital, um, enterprise of capital, I think will be key issues to address for the private sector. Well, as we wrap up on this discussion, in terms of policy direction, the budget, and a budget that will be quite influenced by a fund program, what should we be expecting from you when you go before parliament? Mm -hmm. Well, budget influenced by the post-COVID program for economic growth, which is what we put together before the fund program came, which on the back of that is what we have the fund program. So we will not be deviating um, from um, our focus on seeing how um, to get the private sector back uh, in stable uh, and in equilibrium, and that, that would be key. Um, so uh, we'll have to confront the issue of taxes, as I mentioned, confront the issue of um, skills, uh, confront the issue of price of capital uh, will be in there. And um, I'm sure we'll find a solution. Ghana always finds a solution. So, I mean, confronting the issues about taxes, would it mean some rationalization, or reviewing the rates uh, and all the rest to bring it down, going up for some new taxes? Yeah, who knows? Huh? <laughs> you, you, you talked about rationalization and what is the status of uh, some of the government uh, social intervention programs, school feeding, free SHS. We knew that there was some work going on there what is the status of the work that has been done on these programs? No, we did a lot of work on that, and I think um, one of the auditing firms, um, that, and those were part of the structural benchmarks that were needed um, for um, this approval, that the SLA that we received. Also, for the DPO uh, from the World Bank, which will be about 300 to 500 million um, dollars, um, also in December, um, these were all boxes that we had to tick. Um, so about 17, I believe, um, such programs were looked at uh, and therefore I will incorporate them into um, the budget this year. Little Bear told me that uh, the, the, the bank in principle has approved some $300 million to Ghana under the budget support program. It should be coming in December. Again, what do you make of this development? Well, that, that um, George, uh, continues to go to say where we are um, as, as a country and the favor we have found and the hard work that we have done. Not only is the DPO going to lead to the releasing of $300 million, but also um, the Ghana um, uh, Financial Stabilization Fund will also result in another $250 million so that we can make sure that the banks are strong, solvent, and also liquid. Um, so I think, once again, uh, as a people, 
I'm looking at the example of what Morocco has done um, to show the resilience, looking at what we have done since um, July of last year um, to lead the pack uh, in getting these assurances from the fund. Um, I'm really confident uh, that we will do this in much shorter order than we have estimated. This has been PM Express Business. I know the debate was still going in your homes and your offices about the, the stability and whether we are on track and how does the stability in the macro numbers trickle down to businesses and Ghanaians out there. This has been PM Express Business Edition coming to you from Marrakesh, Morocco, where the annual meetings of the IMF took place and brought together finance ministers and governors from all over the world to deliberate on the global economy. My name is George Yafe. Have a great day from Marrakesh, Morocco. This has been PM Express.